right guys, welcome into my house. I'm gonna take you through my whole coffee setup, uh, what I use, what I used to use, and kind of tell you the ins and outs of everything I got. So we'll start off with the main piece of the whole coffee setup, and that's the actual espresso machine itself. This is a Lamarzico GS3 MP. Uh, Lamarzico is, you know, the best in the coffee game. Any cafe you go to, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a Lamarzico machine behind the counter. This is a single group head, so that just means there's only one group head here with one port filter. When you get into the bigger industrial ones, I'll have two of these units side by side or three. The GS3 comes in a couple different variations. This one is the MP, so the manual paddle. So that's this right here. Um, I chose this just because I like to geek out. You know, it's kind of like my engineering background. It's one more variable that you can put in. Um, this allows you to change the pressure at the port filter while you're brewing. Most times you just Throw the paddle across, it ramps, the pressure ramps up to nine bars, your coffee brews, happy days. If I'm running the same beans for a long time and I wanna start experimenting, see what different flavor profiles I pull out of it, you can pull this across a little bit, ramp up to one bar for a pre-infusion, so you're basically just pre-soaking the puck of coffee. Ramp it up to nine bars for like the first couple seconds of the extraction, and then for the rest of the pull, you know, drop it down to six bars so it just has less pressure at the puck and you, you can pull different flavors out of it. I basically only drink espresso. Originally when I got into coffee, I thought espresso was just like a super condensed coffee. If you get into good espresso, you're getting flavors like, you know, raspberries or toffee or, you know, crazy, crazy, not just a dark over roasted sludge. You can get very light floral, acidic fruity flavors this machine is double boiler so there's a dedicated boiler for for brewing and then a dedicated boiler for the steam wand fun fact i've never used the steam wand i do double shots only americano if it's getting later in the day and i want something just to sip on but i will be taking a latte art class so I can learn how to steam milk properly. But right now, double shots only. I think it's important to know like this machine is like the cream of the crop. It's as good as they come, you know, hand assembled in Florence, Italy. Uh, this is, as we, as we like to say it, an input. You know, it's like, it's something that you use every single day that brings you joy, passionate about. So it's worth for me to get a machine like this. The first machine I had was a much more starter machine. It was a Rocket Apartamento. So it was a much smaller footprint, much less features, but for just pulling one, two shots every morning, it was a fantastic piece. It looked great on the countertop, you know, all stainless steel, it had the exposed group head. So I mean, it looked amazing, it did the job, but it took away a ton of the variables for playing around and experimenting. Grinder, when I first bought uh, the Rocket Machine, it was a pretty big shocker because I thought the only expense was the coffee machine itself. And then uh, the gentleman that helped me was like, nope, you need this good grinder. And I was like, oh no, I got this, you know, Mr. Coffee, Mr. coffee Grinder. Um, and he was like, no, not acceptable. Like the machine can only work with what you put into it. So if you're starting with a subpar product, you're gonna get a subpar extraction. So invest in a good grinder. This one by Mazer or Mazer, super jolly. Um, you can pre-program in your dose for your double shot, your single shot, and then you got a little on-demand grind there. I use a small hopper um, because Coffee goes stale. 
So you want to use it uh, in smaller quantities, like with this coffee here. It has the roast date marked on the bottom. If your coffee does not have a roast date on it, not a good sign. So just when it's out here, it's not airtight, you know, it's uh, kind of exposed to the elements, you know, the heat fluctuation throughout the day. So it's gonna go stale a little bit quicker. So I just keep it in a smaller hopper, so it's smaller quantity. I move through the whole hopper a little bit faster. And then when the bags open, just a like airtight vacuum seal bucket to throw it in, uh, helps it keep a little bit longer. You need a good grinder to go with your coffee machine. Also a good scale. How do you say that? A-C-A-I-A. -A, -A. a good scale. Once again, when, when I was buying my first machine, I was like, oh no, no, I have just like a regular food scale. And he was like, no, not accurate enough. I didn't realize that the weights of your dose, so the weight of the coffee going into your portafilter and the weight of the extraction, so the amount of coffee that's coming out is, I mean, it's everything. Like your dose and your extraction weights dictate what flavors you're gonna get out of your coffee. So, a good, a good scale is a necessity. Everyone knows the tamper, that's when you got your portafilter out, tamping the coffee down. Um, Necessity, I actually rely more on the distributor. So this, when your grinds are in there, you just drop this on top, give it a spin, it evens out your puck, um, distributes the grinds, and you can adjust the depth. So a lot of times, if I'm doing a bigger dose into the porta filter, I don't even need to tamp it. Obviously you got your knock box. It's the typical sound. Once you're done extracting, that's why cafes can be noisy places. So these are my extra porta filters. This is the only one that really gets used because it's a blind porta filter. Use that for back flushing or cleaning out your machine. These two are what you call naked or a bottomless porta filter. These are really nice when you're playing with new beans or a new dose, or you're trying to find something, playing with variables, you actually get to see the whole bottom of the, of the basket. So it hooks in a machine like this. You can get underneath it and watch how the coffee is extracting. So if you're getting just bitter or sour coffee, or you know it's just not coming out the, the flavor you're expecting, throw one of these in and you can watch it and you'll see like, if there's channeling, so it's all coming out of one specific area. Like, so if there's a crack in the port of, in the puck, the water will go to the path of least resistance and it will all channel through that one weak spot. So you know, okay, I need to tamp more evenly or you can see if all the coffee's rushing out, so I need to tighten up the grind a little bit or you can tell a lot. These hangers are port keeper I literally just found them on Etsy, I think. Over time, you start collecting mugs and cups. Some of them have different uses. So just like a regular shot glass, you can kind of tell the volume coming out, but this is, this will be used if you're making a drink. So like whenever we make iced Americanos or something, pour it into that, it's easy to pour somewhere else, but you leave all the glasses on top of the machine so that they stay warm. Um, Pouring your shot directly into a cold cup will ruin the flavor. Just a regular glass espresso cup. I know it was probably just the cheapest thing on Amazon, but they hold heat well, and then you're able to see the pour as it's going. So you see the base, the body, and then the crema. It's just super satisfying when you see the body kind of falling. It looks like, a, like when you pour a Guinness. These ones, I got fancy with these ones. So they're double wall insulated glass. And then on the inside, there's fins to agitate the espresso after you pour it. Because as you're pulling the espresso, there's different flavors throughout the cup. And so this, you know, big overhead area to hold the aroma so you can get a good whiff of it. And then the fins to agitate it before you drink it. And it holds the heat well. 
And then these just kind of bigger cups for, you know, a long black, which is basically an Americano with a lot less water. So it's like equal parts coffee and water. I have this grinder set up, the espresso machine. We have this grinder set up for pour over because um, Sammy, Sammy prefers pour over in the morning. And then we got a nice electric kettle uh, for, for tea and bean at night. I always drink coffee just as like for the energy. Like I just wanted the caffeine. I didn't care how I got it or really how it tasted. Um, and then, and I, I drank espresso a lot. So like even just from like the mass chains where they just push a button and you get espresso in a cup and it was just always, it seemed like condensed like a sludge version of coffee, just super, super condensed. It never tasted good. Um, and then we went to Australia and it was while we were there and like, they basically don't have drip coffee or pour over. It was like, everything was espresso based. And I remember getting a shot and like, as I usually do, just like throw it back, like plug your nose, throw it back, and you just, you're looking for the end result. You don't care how you get there. And, and I was like, oh my God, that, that tasted amazing. And then come to find out Australia has some of the best coffee in the world. And they're like, no, 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 like your espresso should not taste like just condensed to boiled down coffee. It should have its own flavor profiles. So it was actually after that trip that I started trying to research and learn more about it because you learned that there's so many variables and things, factors that go into it. And, uh, and that's when I bought my, my first machine, that little rocket apartamento. Little, I mean, it's a tiny little footprint, but it looks like a centerpiece. It's a, I mean, it's kind of like a little showstopper. It's really, it's adorable. Um, but yeah, so I think realizing that espresso isn't just condensed coffee, it has its own notes and flavors. Like if you get good beans, you know, it tastes like there's raspberry syrup in there or, you know, toffee, um, you know, your, your bag of coffee should have tasting notes in it. You know, whether it's strawberry, raspberry, toffee, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, um, and it's, a lot on, on the beans themselves, but then also how you brew them. <laughs>